Welcome back to Hazelnuts. <gasps> Karen, look at this. On this episode, we do even more welding. We get to take some Tesla large drive units apart and... What hammer? I've got wood. <laughs> we have two Tesla large drive units in front of us once again. Once again, always got our drive units. We have a performance unit here with the red, like we explained last time. This already has an ATV diff fitted. It used to be in a Porsche. This has been used and abused and it's sort of not at a state where we would have probably put it into a customer vehicle. But it's perfect for this application. We also have some AEM control boards. So we're going to explain on this episode how to replace the logic board and why we are doing that. Yep, for full control. What else do you have there? Oh, this. This is a iBooster from a Tesla Model X, which has a very, very long tank. Look, look how long that is. The reason we've chose uh, the earlier iBooster is because you can run these in a dumb mode. So we can run them on 12 volt without all the extra control. And this is gonna give us extra brake pressure so that if we're ever at a point where we're running low regen or you want regen off because you're trying to spin it in circles, you don't want the motor stopping every time you let off the throttle and stuff like that, this is gonna give us extra brake pressure to make sure we can still stop this hefty beast. And so we can stop when we've got another T5 on the trailer behind us. That's the one, I forgot about that one. Yeah, yeah good idea. We've also got some things that Carl's made, which slots in because- For his whoopsie. Yes, because obviously last time we realized we were slightly out. We have measured up and it is even by eye across with no issues. We just need to put it back a bit. So this is gonna allow us to push it back a bit. And there's also a, a hole saw. <laughs> that cost me 20 quid. But I thought we got to drill four pieces of five mil steel, so we had to have a good one. And obviously don't forget, we've got the reverse oil pump here, which was supplied by Felton. Um, and this is obviously going to go into this unit for the front because we're going to be running it in reverse. And the only reason we're run, we the only way we can run it in reverse is with the AM control board. Yes. Or yeah. we have to flip the motor, which someone put in the comments. Do not want to flip the motor because then you have to redo all the oiling and just so much pain. Yeah. Because these actually ran in reverse and they're B-class electric and the RAV4 electric all those years ago. So we know they're capable of running reverse at full power. But anyway, should we get started? Well, we better start taking motors apart and fitting eye boosters. Yes, we shall. Let's go. Let's go. I have a delivery all the way from Ireland. What is it? From our good friends, EV Breakers. We have subframe number three. The third subframe of the saga. Yes, but in here, there's also a pair of drive shafts. There is a pair of drive shafts. So the pair of drive shafts, because what we're hoping is we can mod these for the front. Fingers crossed. And hopefully, hopefully this subframe's in good condition. It was then time to get the subframe back out due to our oopsie and start fitting Car L's new solution. So we're gonna cut the bottom out of the out of the subframe. So we've got the holes in the bottom, then the this sits in the top, it's got a slot in it. So that then allows that to rotate in any direction we want it to. Yep. Then the bolt can come through a big fancy big fat washer so that we've got some room. The slot goes on it and then it can move around in whatever direction we want it to so that when that's all bolted in that will cover the big washer will cover where it's connected yep. but we'll have it on the on the slots and then when it's all finally in position we can tack it all up and weld it all up properly so we know it's all secure so not weld it up properly first no that's probably wrong way around probably should get it all aligned and then weld it up oh we're just confident <laughs> <laughs> cool well, we better get it um, but good. <laughs> I've just tacked some nuts into here, some M6 nuts. So that now the whole saw will position center and it should keep it fairly still so that we can drill these bad boys out and it's not going to wander everywhere. I'm telling you, this drill, that drill is going to be a treat. I just scratched it there and it nearly cut through it. Get a bit out on your end. What are you doing to carbon? Oh, this. come over the cardboard. Look, no, don't scratch it. juice on it. <laughs> Get a loop, this ain't gonna stay on there, that. <laughs> oh, Nick. <laughs> Why put the cardboard down? Now it's gonna flick away otherwise. Now we took the decision to let Car L play with the whole saw, in which he made it look super easy. May have been because me nor Nick were actually doing any of the work. Woo! Ooh. There's one. Must say though, this new slotted twizzly design looks like it'll do the job. 
Now be really careful when dropping these motors or taking them out of these subframes because that low voltage connector on the end of the inverter is super easy to smash off and they require a lot of soldering to fix. That nick looks like it might need a hammer. What hammer? I've got wood. <laughs> Slightly inappropriate, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the moment of truth is nearly here. Up to go down on our ramp, line it up, bolt it in, and just hope that this has given us the movement we need actually make it line up correctly. I reckon that's better. You reckon it's better, do you? So you put your best voice on. I put my T's in, better. I reckon that's fixed the cock up. It's about three fingers either side. Yeah, but would it not? Oh, it will move a bit. Yeah. There might still be some movement in it. Oh, I think it's lovely. I'm not gonna moan about that. I was happy with the way it was before this side. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, come on, Carl. Oh, Carl, look. Come on, Carl, quick, Carl. Come on, Carl. Oh, it's better here, too. <laughs> look at that. Ta da. <gasps> Carl, look at this. One, but we don't have to play with look. The plate yeah, for the eye booster fits perfect. <laughs> Oh yeah! What, you want me to put this bit on? Well, this is the iBooster. This was going to do our brakes instead of the normal servo, so we don't have to run a vacuum pump. But I'd love to poke it through the hole. But the problem being, oh, I put that in that way around. It's meant to go that way around. I think it's going to clash with the pedal. We'll get there. I think that's going to work out pretty good. On the end of the eye booster, we've got like a clevis pin here that goes through the pedal by the looks of it. <clears throat> On the transporter pedal, it looks like there was like a ball that popped into a plastic joint. So we might be able to like smash that bit of plastic out, drill a hole, pin through, and job is a good one. At the 85, and we'll hold on to that bit. And then voila. Voila. Yeah. Nick's welded the bit onto there, as you've seen. So that's the original bit off the iBooster. That's the bit off of the van. And this is sort of iBooster part, and it's sort of split together, which is quite good. So this is just going to bolt back onto here. And then we're hopefully going to fit it into the van. And it will work. Carl's pulling faces behind the camera. But <laughs> it should work. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's like it was meant to be. Look, we got an adjustable height workbench from Garage Equipment Online, and it's got two sides. So you can work in two places at once, it's wonderful. Now this is the inside of a Tesla large drive unit, but a performance one because it's red. We're gonna be fitting this AEM replacement logic board in the place of the original Tesla one. Now the reason we're doing this, this will allow us to run an AEM VCU 275, allowing us to do torque mapping and loads and loads of cool stuff which we cannot do with the original Tesla board. Now it plugs into the original place, so all the plugs match up, which makes it a direct replacement, and all the bolt holes are in the same place, so it's super easy to just bolt in. And as you can see, if you overlay them, they are exactly the same form factor. Now these are IGBTs, and there is multiple banks of them within a drive unit. So you have a DC coming in, splits it into three, one for each phase bank, basically. You then have your low voltage connector going in, which has your throttle on it and your encoder and all that stuff to plug back into the new logic board. And once the power has gone through those phases, converted it to AC, it goes in just there, through basically three bolts into the motor side to power up the AC motor. And we'd simply just bolt the new board in, plug it all together, and then we get to put the cover back on. 
AM board is now fitted as you have seen. So we're gonna put the cover back on the performance motor and get started on fitting that reverse oil pump to the base unit, which is going in the front of the van. It always reminded me of that scene on James Bond where he like disarms a nuke. Yeah, careful, don't touch the side, it'll yeah. blow up. Uh, oh. Yeah, man. Now as you push it off the ramp. It's this connector that's a pain. It's got to line back up through the hole. There we go. Like a glove. Now time to break that Tesla seal and pop this cover off. Now we're doing this to give some slack to the temp sensors. Before we do so, we've got to remove this orange cap. Now be really careful, these go brittle and they crack all the time. Once that's off and you haven't broken it, like I then did, you can undo these four bolts to release the low voltage connector. Now these must be undone, otherwise you'll take the low voltage connector with the inverter cover as you remove it. Oh, look, it's green, not red, meaning it's not a performance motor. Now, anyway, we're basically gonna snip this off and we're basically gonna remove or give a bit of slack to the temperature wire because that goes through the gearbox into the motor. Now, if you separate this and rip that out, you'll basically write the motor off completely. So I tend to put a bit of slack inside the cover like that, chuck the cover back on so no damage can happen to the inverter as you separate it. And then we move on to undoing these two bolts to gain access to the AC link to the motor. Now these can be a bit fiddly to get out as they're sort of wedged in place with some plastic stuff, but once you've got them out, then allows us to start undoing all the bolts to separate the gearbox apart. We took this apart because there's meant to be a plastic thing on the end of here, which is meant to make the oil pump work, but there is not. Now before the oil pump, we have to get the diff out to gain access to remove the oiling system. Once the oiling system out, we're going to strip it all down and we're going to save the gears out of the old oil pump to then retrofit into the new Felton oil pump. Now, as you can see, this is the difference. The Basically, the internal cutting or channels are a different direction to basically push the oil in the opposite direction. And once you've got a clean surface ready to go, you can refit those gears you've salvaged from the original pump into the new Tesla oil pump and pop them all together. Once they're together, make sure it spins freely, not binding up so you know it's gonna work when it's reassembled, and then pop the back shell back on and press it together. You may not be able to do this by hand, you might need to use a vise or give it a little tap with a hammer. Once it's all together, check it for spins freely, and then this is the bit that was missing. And we still haven't found the pieces of it anywhere, so maybe it's always been missing, but the drive unit still had the original marks from Tesla, so we don't know how it's actually been missing. So pop that on, put the clip on so it can't come off, as that's another piece we didn't find inside the motor, and then give it a quick spin up, should spin nice and freely. Pop the oil direction thingy mobile back in, and then you can start reassembling it to the oil catch. There is a magnet here, which picks up odd bits of dirt, so maybe give that a clean down, just remove any old sort of bits of gearbox, or gearing from it, and then basically pop the clip back on so it can't come off, and you're ready to go. So this is the piece that comes out of where the rotor and stator is, and that seal just there is the one that leaks and then basically fills it up with water and then makes it seize and fail. So this here is one that we've basically welded up. So it's had a puck put in here, welded that side, welded around here, but the key thing here is the coolant goes in here, but it comes out here to go to the outside casing and inverter, but it still comes out at the top because that means it's still just cooling of the gearbox area, which some of the ones on the market block this off. And that basically means your differential and gearbox can actually get quite hot. So we're now gonna get these fitted. We've also got to do the rear motor. Now this thing in my hand is the encoder and the encoder wheel, and this is vital for giving data to the logic board to tell it what the position the motor's in when it's driving or moving. Now we chuck some gearbox seal on here, pop this back on, do all the bolts up to make sure we don't get any leaks. And we move on to this lovely new reverse oil pump, 
which is pretty simple. Just bolts back in exactly the way that it unbolted. Now this back in place, you can get the diff fitted back in. Now that cage only goes in one way, because the bolts are slightly offset. Basically push the diff back in, make sure it lines up, give it a little spin just to make sure that there's no damage, everything spins freely. We're then using a gearbox seal to just put sealant all the way around, so make sure you get a good coating on that and make sure it's really, really clean beforehand. And then you simply pop it back together. I said simply, this was an absolute nightmare. It probably took me a good half an hour, but the joys of YouTube, I can make it look as easy as that. Do all the bolts up nice and tight, leave it to dry, pop the inverter cover back off, reroute in that temperature sensor, and obviously swap the board over to your AEM control board so you're ready to go. Thank you so much for watching this episode. We've got quite a bit done, haven't we? We have, we've sorted out our cock up at the rear and we've got these to fit on the next episode. The suspension. For our inboard suspension, which would be great. We even got this eye booster fitted in the front. Ta-da! And it works even with your welding. That's pretty cool. And you got the reverse oil pump and control boards fitted to the two motors. Yeah, and we actually fit the cog back on the oil pump. That was missing. it was missing when we opened it. I said, yeah, control boards are in, next episode, rear suspension, and we're gonna get the drive shafts made up for the front end, and maybe front suspension. Maybe, if they're built in time. If they're built in time. So thank you so much for watching this episode, and what have you got to remember to do? Like, subscribe, and follow us for everything else on this build, because it's still a hell of a long way to go. Yeah, there's still a long, long way to go. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon. What are you doing? I was sweeping. 